was like, till I thought that I'm going to stick this out. Um, I was always like, I would come back or take the drive home and just kind of process um, more of what she said than what I said. And I feel like that's very helpful when it comes to therapy is kind of don't think about what you said, kind of think about what the therapist said and kind of bring that to light about your situations. And mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I was lucky enough to go through it and figure my stuff. I wouldn't say figure it out, but it uh, definitely process a lot of pent up emotions because I'm more of a person where I don't show my emotions my whole life. Like my whole life, I've always been very generous to people. I always put someone like a friend of mine before my own self interest, um, whether it's emotionally, physically, um, and then it's painted as kindness. Yeah. Yeah. Mental Health Monday. 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 Like, pfft. I'm going to stop right here. I'm just going to chill for a little bit. I would also really like to go down that thing, but I'm just also going to stop. <laughs> It's gonna be like my current job. <laughs> it works. It works for me. You want to introduce yourself before which, we cut which it? Camera um, all right. That? So this is your camera right here, okay. and that's your camera too. What's up, guys? It's your boy Juice Jones back with another episode of Mental Health Monday. Tell them who you are, bro. Uh, I'm Matthew Sher. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What sports do you like? Uh, I would say pretty much any sport, but the main one is probably baseball since I grew up playing it my whole life. Really? Uh, yeah, I played for about 16 years. College also? No, not college. High school? High school. What state? Virginia. Oh, you were big into baseball. Yeah. That's really surprising you didn't play in college. I played me. baseball uh, pretty much every season. Every season? Tried to, yeah. I think I'm lucky when it comes to sports because I really didn't start getting into sports heavy until high school. Yeah. I mean, like, I was doing travel ball like at the age of nine. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> that's that's terrible because, like, I think learning to be a professional sucks if you're not able to enjoy the thing that you're being a professional at. I agree. And... What you find as a kid is most of the people who are your coaches are parents, and parents suck. Yeah, my um, my dad was a, my coach for a pretty good while, and then mm -hmm. I was like, all right, I'm sick of this. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's I need, it. I need I distance. Need, I need yeah. an actual coach. Did um, did you ever call him out, or did you ever have the ability to call him out and say, hey, man, we need better than what's going on here? Uh, he would try to tell me to like stay in the game because I was a pitcher, so he would try to keep me in as long as I could since it was like me or one other pitcher who were like the A pitchers mm -hmm. and if we didn't pitch we typically lost. Did he not know your capacity though? No, he just kept pushing. That's why my career, I think, baseball career ended. Yeah, that's the I just... Because there came to a point where I was, got on JV in high school and then I was like, I wasn't really putting, I would say, as much effort as the other kids because growing up, I was kind of not to be to my own horn, but I was definitely better than most of the kids my age. You had a good measure of uh, fewer. I was definitely were. up there. Like, I was playing travel ball with kids three years older than me. Um, so I think that kind of got to me as well, like, worth it ethic-wise. Mm -hmm. um, looking back at it now, I do wish I put more effort into it and kind of pursued that passion of mine but I guess just at the time it just wasn't for me and now I I kind of just take it how it is and it is what it is what could have been could have been but I don't really look back at it and regret about what I've done do you think that's a core part of who you are being able to look back and not have regrets for the what ifs I would say as a person I I mean, if you do me wrong, I'm definitely going to hold a grudge on you for a while, but I definitely, after a while, it kind of goes away. Mm -hmm. um, I typically try not to linger in the past at all when it comes to emotions, just pretty much anything at all. I kind of just wake up the next day and just think in the moment mm -hmm. and just live in the moment rather than have my thoughts preoccupied of the past when the past is a definitely helpful learning experience to when you're growing as a person but it can hopefully it can also be self-destructive i believe so have you ever had a a moment where it's like oh you let the past have a little bit too 
too much of a grip with you? Uh, I mean, there. I mean, I would say I'm a very closed off person. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely have a wall between when I meet people. Yeah. Um, if you're not someone I know or we've talked to before or we're not really close, like you will not know anything about me. Yeah. I will not open myself up to allow you to know anything about me. So there's a lot of perceptions of people like I get a lot that uh, I'm not approachable or I'm an angry person all the time. So I, I get told that I'm an angry person all the time or I'm grumpy. You've been called an angry person. Yeah. I know we've met under different circumstances, <laughs> but I've never, I've, and, and the profile, the profile never said angry, lots of anger. I just, yeah, that's, so that's kind of uncomfortable though. How do you, that's something you I've kind of, that? that's, I think what, I think I let that kind of hit home too hard because, um, I would say in the past, like them calling me an angry person definitely made me angry because it's like, I'm not angry, I'm not upset, I'm not grumpy, but you mm -hmm. telling me that I am is definitely gonna yeah. make me angry. Yeah. Um, I've had troubles with anger in the past, that's why I brought myself to therapy. Okay. Um, went to therapy for like anger and depression, um, went for about probably six months. Um, I would say it was definitely very helpful. I would say I'm a lot more lenient when it comes to triggers to make me angry. Mm -hmm. I know a lot more ways to kind of keep my mind at peace and let my anger, I guess one way I do is let it in, ride it in like a wave, let the emotions be high and then let it kind of go back and get smaller. Or I typically kind of just let it, my anger be background music where I can still kind of hear it like music, but it slowly gets turned down and then eventually you don't hear it anymore. You ever seen the movie Wanted? I, see, one I with feel Angelina like I have. Jolie was like the assassin movie. Yeah, I believe I feel I have. like uh, when you said that background music, I like pictured him doing the whole bullet trick around the room <laughs> and you're just chilling and walking away <laughs> and it all goes down. <laughs> yeah, now that you say that, I guess that brings, yeah, I can, yeah, but I mean, I can definitely keep my cool in situations, so, but I would say sometimes my past, I guess my past me of like getting angry comes up every mm -hmm. once in a while, but I would say it's definitely better. So, I'm from Jersey, mm -hmm. right? And when I moved to DC for college, I knew in the forefront of my mind it was going to be very hard for me to move back home because as I built this life for myself, I didn't want the image of myself that people hold true yeah. to be the only thing they base the rest of my accomplishments on. Yep. I didn't want to, oh, you're good enough for the job. You've done this before. I wanted it to be, no, he's done a lot of different work that makes him qualified for the job. job. Yeah. I didn't want, no, no, you're, you'll never be good at that because we've never seen you do that. And it's like, you not seeing me do that doesn't speak to the YouTube videos I've been studying. It doesn't speak to the, I actually read newspaper and documents on these things when it comes to like cloud architecture and everything Yeah, else. all the background knowledge that they don't know that you have. Yeah. They're just assuming, which... That sucks. And it's like, a lot of folks, they don't grow with your interests. They just grow with the fact that, oh, you're still breathing, you're fine. Yeah. And it's like, no, there's, there's a lot more to me than just the breaths that I take. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, for someone like you in your situation, even when you make that progress within the six months that you went to therapy, it's very much, well, well, we've seen proof of you being angry. Yes, you're supposed to be angry in life. I don't know if you guys know this, but yeah. that's actually a part of the things. But if you grow up in a household where you're on the mound and you say, hey, I don't want to be here anymore. We have someone who's good enough to replace me and no one listens when I say I've had enough, that means that as I grow up, I'm no longer going to express myself and it's just going to be point A to point C without the B. Yep. Because you've, that, you've given me examples that I can't communicate with any of you. Yeah, that's actually very insightful. That's probably how I react when it comes to situations like that. Like I'm very point A to point C. Like I will like eat the mean words I'll eat like something that's frustrating me but at one point like mm -hmm. it's just if you don't listen to me or do what I ask or try to make an effort then I'm 
it's going to be brought up and not yeah. a, in an ugly way, which I don't want it to be brought up. Yeah, it's not going to be constructive. No. <laughs> when you um, let's roll it, let's roll it back because you said a lot of interesting things, and sometimes I think the best conversations are what are we willing to touch, pick mm-hmm. up, and put down, yep. right? And I'm going to talk to you in a lot of baseball terms, just letting you know that. Right. right. When you said baseball. Go ahead. So. When you realized that you were suffering from depression and anger, what was that realization like for you? Was it something that you were kind of aware of or was it like me angry? No, not not me. No, I was definitely aware of it. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely been like my parents have definitely been supportive. I mean, they have their moments where I don't even want to be around them. I mean, I feel like that's every relationship, parents, mm-hmm. friends, whoever you're with. Um and they've always been like, they haven't really, they don't really think a lot about mental health a lot. I guess it's just their generation. Bills, bills, bills is what they think about. <laughs> Which is understandable, but then like, all right, after you've paid the bill, can yeah. we have that conversation? Yeah. So we don't hate each other as we're taking care of the bills? Yeah. And yeah. And then, I mean, after a while, like, I was put on medication. I was doing all this type of like testing stuff and they're... I mean, everyone. It was kind of an, an annoyance whenever my parents or my mom would be like, "Oh, it seems like you're, it's helping," and I, I kind of didn't want it to. Let's like, pause right here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pause right here. Let's pause right here, because because it's a lot to dissect, and I don't. When I have these conversations. I think it's very easy for people to hear our conversations with our parents and they're like, they are villains. And it's like, no, they're people. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I discuss when it comes to Get Home Safe's work is when people are glad that you've gotten help and that that they're able to be there for you. Yep. It's very easy to change. Hey, we're glad you're getting help into hey, we're glad you're no longer a problem. Yeah. And as the person that's in that position that's figuring things out, when you hear, oh, it looks like it's making a difference. It's like, let's have a defined difference. Yeah. <laughs> let's have a conversation on this difference yeah. that you're bringing up. Yeah. I mean, when I would hear that, I just didn't even want to talk. I would just be like, all right. I mean, mm-hmm. good for you, I guess. I mean, I didn't want it to be like, Oh, we're glad therapy's helping. Like, I'm, I mean, of course I wanted it to help, but mm-hmm. I didn't want it to be a perception of, oh, he needed this to feel better. I mean, every person that is feeling down about themselves emotionally or anything that's going on in their life should definitely talk to someone. Um, but I would say for a lot of people, therapy just doesn't work for a lot of people just based how they're raised or based how they mm-hmm. grew up or where they're from um definitely for me it was new for me i'm not a open person like i said earlier yeah. uh so sitting down in a in a room while they're just glancing over you and examining you like for who you are and what you've been through is kind of like a tough transition to make especially someone that knows nothing of therapy mm-hmm. um so that was a big step and i'd say at first i wasn't very open like i was like yeah like this is what's going on but after a while you if you know it's the right therapist then a lot of people should know that the therapist that you go to first might not be the one for you oh it's a breakup waiting to happen yeah, yeah. <laughs> so don't stick with it like but but, but if you found it on the yeah, first time good for you. hey great job for yeah. you <laughs> but i mean if it's not working out then yeah. you need to move on and try to find someone else that yeah. might be able to help you but yeah and and just like dating sometimes you may have to date a lot of therapists until you find the right one and it's like oh, this is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Because as much as we get therapy in order to get help and maybe have the right person hold that mirror to us so we see our reflection mm-hmm. and they add shape to that, Yeah. We, we're really particular about the hands that are holding the mirror before we have the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, now I got you. Looking at what the hands look like or they... Yeah. Fingernails, yeah. are they cracked? Yeah. Are they red? Not are they enough calluses. Like, I don't know if you. I don't know if you know, know what know this hard word, no. man. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your hands over. No, you're not cut out for it. It's like all right. Hand check. I don't know about this I one, man. You can do it. Mm, yeah, yeah I mean, man. And, and then how many? Um, if you don't mind me asking, how many 
therapist would you say you, you went to until you found the right one? I was actually lucky enough for the one and done. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but at first I was definitely like the first few weeks I was like, I don't know if this is it. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I'll just keep going back and give it another try. But she was very like persistent about, you can take your time with me, like, um, this and that. And I feel like that was very helpful for me to kind of stick with her because I don't, I don't know from other therapists since I haven't been to many other ones. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like their agenda could be very probably pushy in some ways, but yeah. she was very relaxed to understand what I was going through and she would like take like a few weeks for her to figure out one situation that I couldn't really figure out. So yeah. that was very nice. When was the moment you knew she was the one therapy wise? And the reason I say that is because even though lucky enough for you, she was one and done, the version of you that exists now, if you go back to her, she may not be the right fit for you yeah. anymore because of everything else that you've been through since that growth period? Mm -hmm. um, I would say it was probably a two-month period where I was like, till I thought that I'm going to stick this out. Um, I was always like, I would come back or take the drive home and just kind of process um, more of what she said than what I said. And I feel like that's very helpful when it comes to therapy is kind of don't think about what you said, kind of think about what the therapist said and kind of bring that to light about your situations and um, mm -hmm. I don't know I was lucky enough to go through it and figure my stuff I wouldn't say figure it out but it uh, definitely processed a lot of pent up emotions because I'm more of a person where I don't show my emotions my whole life like my whole life I've always been very generous to people I always put someone like a friend of mine before my own self interest um, whether it's emotionally physically um, and then it's painted as kindness yeah yeah. And then it always comes back to bite you in the butt. Yeah. So I've always, growing up, still now I'm still kind of that person, but ever since meeting a partner, she's definitely brought a, a light into being more open and discussing, you know, you, the emotions, because it's not healthy in a relationship when it's not fair to me or her if I am feeling some type of way and then I just put it under the rug. And yeah. Then, um, <laughs> comes back later to bite me in the ass you know I, I pictured her walking over the rug going to the bathroom thinking what's that underneath that rug <laughs> <laughs> and you know you're in the next room yo don't worry about don't it don't look at it <laughs> don't worry about it yeah just put another rug over top of it it'll be fine it's, it's two rugs now <laughs> yeah <laughs> when it comes to anger and depression when you were dealing with it. Did they feel like they came from the same place or did it feel like one came and then the other one just happened to tag along? Mm, that's hard to say. Okay. I would say probably, I mean, that's kind of just like a weird thing to say, but I would say probably the depression tagged along mm -hmm. because growing up, like I said, I, people have always like, my whole family, like when I was growing up, going like going through puberty and stuff, they'd be like, they would call me mute Matt because mm -hmm. I wouldn't speak. Um, <laughs> so they would always uh, like bring me down for like not speaking. This sounds like a villain origin. Story. So I've yeah. definitely always been the type of person where that's kind of why I feel like I don't open myself up a lot is mm -hmm. because of those perceptions and the way I was, the way they they would berate me of like me trying to make me not be myself yeah in that sense they weren't even really giving you time for you to figure out who i mean trying to be for yourself yeah i mean they're like parents would always be like why do you look so grumpy and stuff like this just like i'm really not like grumpy like i'm sorry if like my facial expression says something else but mm -hmm. like when it comes to it like i said i really don't dwell in the past much um i more of think like if something affected me terribly i'll think on it figure out a solution, grief about it, and then kind of just move on and just have that thought in the back of my mind, not of like really looking bad, but moving forward to think back and not make that same mistake. Do you think because of the way you were brought up, it made you more inclined to want to take things, take care of things by yourself instead of with people? Because I know things are different for you now that you have a partner that understands, but I could imagine how that probably showed up in like group projects, how yep. that showed up in all right, I'm going to meet up with someone, but now I seem to be carrying all these things that aren't mine. They're supposed to be ours mm -hmm. and other stuff like that. Yeah, I would say 
I like when it comes to like cleaning our apartment, like mm -hmm. I'm going to take care of that most of it because I like it my way and I like it done that way. <laughs> um, the particulars. Yeah. Same with like group projects in school. Like um, I would always try to, not all the time, like I would kind of every once in a while I might be that person not really putting it in a lot of work, like that one person. But mm -hmm. most of the time if I was like really into the group projects, especially like college, high school, um, I would want to like take the lead and and kind of like dive into the topic deeper. Um, I'm definitely more of, I definitely take in opinions of people, but one thing that my dad has said to me growing up my whole life is that opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So um, just take everything, and the thing that I've realized and the thing that I've heard is everything that affects me a certain way terribly, I just take everything with a grain of salt. You know, I try not to wear it, where something affects me, I try not to wear it and show it that it affects me that much. Like I might act fine and then go away and then like not be okay. But I mean, I think it's just like growing up, I've kind of had to put on this face of like not really being emotionally there. Or indifference. Or indifference, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's something I've definitely, ever since meeting my partner, I mean, a partner, she's brought so much communication out of me. like. She's my best friend in the world. I will share everything with her. Um, she's probably the only person that I'll, I'll share that information with. Like, not even my parents. I don't, like, my parents always wonder what I'm up to because I don't really mm -hmm. involve myself or really tell friends, family, like, what I'm up to. It's only, like, with her. Yeah. So that's, it's very great to have that support system and allow me to bring up the stuff that is affecting me and not be ridiculed for it. I just want to say you got some great classes. I appreciate I was, I was looking. I was looking at the STEM. I was like, yo, that is tight. <laughs> um, so I think one of the worst fun facts I came to realize is life is a group project. Yep. And I was like, that is terrible. Because, mm -hmm. like, I... I feel sorry for everybody that I was in a group project with in high school, in college, because I don't think I pulled my weight correctly. And now that I do all these things, I think I spend a lot more time looking back at some of my past relationships and wondering how many things did I get away with because I was viewed as a very nice person. Because, mm -hmm. like, you know, if you're nice or people, like, enjoy who you are, there's a lot more leeway with what you can get away with. And I never thought about it that way, but then, like... As I progressed in life, I was like, oh, damn. oh my likability. Yeah. <laughs> I, mm, I was the problem. Maybe that person was right about me on that one time I did that project in college. I was, mm, that's why they had an attitude. And I, my head was just in the clouds. Yeah. Which is ironic that I do cloud architecture. But my head was just <laughs> like in the clouds. And I was like, who would have known? So you mentioned your pops a lot. In terms of like reference points, the good and the bad. Yeah. Is he aware what part he may have played in certain things after you went to therapy and just the way that you were raised? Because like there is such thing as like maybe we interacted with each other a little bit too much. Yeah. Maybe we needed some space. <laughs> um, growing up, me and my dad definitely clashed heads more mm -hmm. than my brother. Like me and him. We got a brother. I do have a brother okay. and older brother. I hope he's cool. He is. Okay, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but me and him, I mean, him being my coach for many years and mm -hmm. him always having, like, an opinion about what I'm sport-wise or what I'm doing with school, it definitely clashed a lot. Um, we definitely are similar when it comes to a lot of things, so we definitely butt heads growing up. Mm -hmm. Was he the best at taking a situation where me and my brother got in trouble and handled it the right way? Probably not. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say that definitely my dad has probably been one of the key factors of like probably where my anger came from. Just the, about the way that, let's just say the way he would discipline my brothers if we got in trouble or something. Or if we did something wrong, he would be the person to yell instead of sit you down and talk mm -hmm. to you quietly. It was from zero to 100 whenever like we did anything wrong. That gets tiring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, does everything have to be handled like this? Yeah. So, I mean, living at home for a while, it's 
it would be like hell like i would always that's like i would be at home and not want to hang out with my parents because mm -hmm. or like sit down and have dinner with my parents because i my dad will probably bring up some snarky shit or bring up something that he's upset about and then like totally throw it on me or throw me under the bus so being home it's like the, yeah you can see the conflicts coming from a mile away so that's that's why I, I think growing up or in the way I am now, it's I'm a very, I can be very standoffish. Um, but I think if people get through that standoffish and kind of like come to me and just talk to me as like a person instead of looking at me and being like, oh, he doesn't want to talk or something like that. I mean, we definitely connect. Like I'll get to know people, but I mean, I'm not very open when it comes to stuff like that. So I don't think the world gives quiet people chances to talk no it's very you're here talk why aren't you talking he's it's up to something bad over See, here funny I can, thing I can is, feel it <laughs> I'm, i can be quiet but i can also be very very loud yeah um i mean you played you played baseball that's not a quiet sport no baseball football basketball everyone spaced out golf i don't I think the only sport that made people may be spaced out as much as Y'all, when it comes to baseball, soccer, and that's at moments. Mm -hmm. Still, the field covering all that—you have to be loud. You have, you literally have to be loud. Yeah. So for you to say, "Hey, I play baseball," and it's like, "But I was quiet." I was, "No, you're not. <laughs> no, <It's all laughs> not on the field. Yeah, it's not on the field. <laughs> yeah." But uh, yeah. I mean, I try not to be. I mean, a partner says all. I mean, my whole family's loud. Like, she comes over to my house for dinner, and we're like. What? Like, you speak up? Like, because our family's just like our family's just very loud. Like we, we like project our voice very. And she's like, you're, she, she after like dinner, she's like, your family's very loud. It's like, yeah. So next time you come over to dinner, you might want to speak up a little bit and say it with your chest. Yeah. Say, every everything that's said, say it with your chest. Yeah. Do um, what's your fondest memory of your family? The only reason I, I ask is just like. As much as we're talking about therapy and anger, I could tell there's a lot of great memories there, too. Greatest memory with my family. God. It's a great question. I would say, I don't know. I mean, I had a lot of great vacations growing up. Um, but I would say my top vacation, it wasn't with my whole family. And surprisingly okay. enough, it was with my father Okay. in this past year. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually right before I met Aparna. Okay. Um, me she told me about that first date. Mm -hmm. The 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 famous pot. The famous. The, the famous. The famous, famous the hot number. pot. <laughs> <laughs> the famous. Are you okay with this? Uh -huh. <laughs> Want my number? Uh -uh. No. Uh -uh. No. <laughs> I mean, at the time, I mean, I was also just like, I showed up to that dinner mm -hmm. not thinking I would meet anyone. Yeah. I mean, it was like an hour and twenty minute drive to this dinner. And I didn't really want to go to begin with. Did everybody have to drive far for this dinner? I would say most people probably commuted 45 minutes plus. Damn. Maybe some a little less. But, um, yeah. I mean, I went there with like a crew neck and was wearing joggers. And oh, then. Just cool it. And then she walks in wearing like this blue polka dot dress, like high heels, <laughs> like hair and makeup. I'm just like, what in the fuck? <laughs> And then, like, and then my this, no one was gonna prepare me. What? And, and then the and then the second thought was, oh, she has to be taken. So I was like, I didn't really want to like. Also, I wasn't really like looking for a relationship at that moment. Those are um, usually the best relationships. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't searching for it, and I mean, after that dinner, I was like, fuck, I should have like gone her number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should have like. She told me about being in the car seat. <laughs> I just sat there, started my car, just, mm, <laughs> squeezing the wheel, <clears throat> and then um, lucky, mm -hmm. lucky um, enough, we met up like a, pretty much a month later mm -hmm. at their place for like game night, and we at first like didn't really talk a lot, and then uh, we connected a lot and really got close to one another, and we've been like inseparable since, and couldn't be happier to have met her at that time <laughs> even though i wasn't looking for it it was definitely the best chef's kiss time yeah just chef's kiss all around just <laughs> beautiful <laughs> beautiful but also a terrible story on my part of how we met no i think that's adorable you have yeah. to say no to people i 
like I said, I'm very yeah closed off. Like I was like, there's no way I'm gonna. It's a reason for everything. Yeah. It's a reason for everything. You know, don't you're not being yourself about it up about it anymore, right? No. All right, cool. That's all that matters. Yeah. If um, what would you say are the top three things you've learned from therapy? Um, think before you speak. <laughs> Tell me more. Um, think before you speak because I'm definitely the person to speak before I think, mm -hmm. and that has definitely bit me in the ass a lot more than what you think. Um, I would also say that even though you might not agree with the current situation that's going on, kind of try to at least to be open-minded to the best of your ability, mm -hmm. just to get a different perspective of how they see you or what they think you're going through and kind of teeter-totter off of that. But I know that a lot of times when people have an input of where you're going through, you don't really want to listen to it. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of more of a basis of, I guess, who you are as a person if you're open for listening. Yeah. Um, and then thirdly, I would say... I don't know. Thirdly, I would just say just... If you're having any type of thought of just anything or you not really know what's going on in your life. Like, I thought therapy, I think, should be for everyone. Like, like how a car needs, I said this to you before we did this podcast, but I feel like a car needs an oil change every once in a while. And I mm -hmm. feel like humans need a mental, like, reset button. Not even a just, question. Just to get past, even if it's, like, one session and you're, like, mm -hmm. screaming what you're angry about, you'll probably be, like... Check engine light is on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I don't know. I, I would say the third thing is, I don't know, just try. Just go out there and try. Mm -hmm. it's the, what's the worst that can happen? You go there and you might not need it. Or if you don't like it, then... Be move. lucky if you don't need it. Yeah. Grateful if you don't need <laughs> it. But if you do... Stick around and pursue it. I would, like, you just have... I mean, it's just like waking up and making your bed every morning. You just got to do it. I don't make my bed up in the morning. <laughs> I wake up and I jump right out of it. I just get straight to the day. And then I come home and I say, you didn't make this. You should have made that. <laughs> I'm very big on my um, mode of operation is always to get to it. But I think my redeeming factor is coming back and saying, hey, that mistake that you made yesterday, try not to do it again today. Yep. Like that, all you can do is like work on it. I feel like I'm the same way. Yeah. If you're, yeah. If you're not running at 100, hey, slow down to 70 and say, hey, man, we might need to turn the curb a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe run over the curb. Who knows? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a curb. Yeah. It's, it's fine. The, fine. City, the city will take care of it. Yeah. Or your car will eat it. Before you got into therapy, were there any concerns? Because you and I agree therapy isn't for everyone, and I think that's a topic that's not discussed enough. Mm -hmm. But... I think, unfortunately, people take the therapy isn't for everyone as the opportunity to say, I see, that's why I don't go to therapy. Yep. It's like, no one said don't go. Yeah. Just if you're there after, like, the Few first tries. six sessions, because six, four, you have a pretty good understanding of who they are and who they're not. Six, you have a good understanding of if they have what you need yep. and not, and then it's time to go. Because, yeah. like... The first two are really just really long assessments until you're really comfortable with having a real conversation with this person. Yeah. The second two is, and this this is actually really funny and not enough people talk about this. Do I like this person? The, yeah. Do I? Like, do I really enjoy speaking to this person? Speaking to this person. Because if I show up and there's a, a certain amount of irritation in the back of my mind as we're talking, that means that even if you give me good advice, I'm not even going to care. Or listen, yeah. Because it's, it's never going to be applied well. I'm not going to give the right effort. And I'm not going to care that I'm not getting better at what I'm here for. Yeah. And that's... I agree. That's where, to me, therapy starts and stops. Yeah. Because... Therapy is a choice, and it only affects the person who's getting it if they want it. Mm -hmm. But the environment that you're in when you get therapy, in terms of the person, the environment that they create, and even who they are, could be the deciding factors in whether I really want to apply this or not. Like, yeah. you can hear the exact same thing from somebody else, and it just hits so much differently. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I'm big on. Yeah, I, I 
you just, I feel like people just need to try it. Yeah, that's why I'm big on. When I first started the work that I do, I was like, y'all need therapy, me too, <laughs> right? Yeah. Here's the therapist, shop for your therapist. Go now. <laughs> if they couldn't get the therapy, I'm yeah. always understanding, I just, just want effort from the people in my community. Yeah. And when people, uh, someone asks, it's like, hey, what is your platform? Is it blackity black? And it's like, yeah, because I'm black, guys, and I have a lot of black friends, but I, I also have a lot of friends who aren't black. I mm -hmm. want to help everyone, and I want to create a space that we can have a general conversation. Even if someone is being ignorant in their conversation, at least they're saying it out loud. And when we decide to correct them, are they going to be open to the fact that their friends and strangers are willing to correct them and not demean who they are in the that's correction? The person, yeah. yeah. And that's, I think that's a lot of what's missing from the mental it, health space right now, the wellness space. Yeah, it's just, there are people are just scared of judgment. It's a, it's just a it's, it's label stamp put on you. Like, if yeah. you're going to therapy, like, oh, is there something wrong with them? Like, Yeah, and it's like, no, therapy is for... People you can go to successful. therapy if you're perfectly healthy, like happy, and you just want to talk about something like talk about your career. Yeah, like, like I, I wasn't ready for this much success so quickly. How yeah. am I supposed to handle it? Most people say, like, oh, you got money, you got success, just go spend it. And yeah, so, but you know. I, I want to be able to spend my money without feeling guilty for those around me who aren't as successful. Yep. I want to be able to enjoy taking my family on vacation and not think about who I used to be and wonder, should I really be spending this money and that it's not a waste? Mm -hmm. I need to start being able to hire someone to clean the house because my capacity to focus on work and study and read notes, that'll get me a bigger boost. That's why I pay for house cleaning and I shouldn't feel guilty about purchasing the opportunity to put myself in a better position. Yeah. It sounds wild, but like growing up, my mom has cleaned a lot of houses and, you know, she's never once complained to me about the people's whose houses she's cleaned. One of them, they just turned 99. My mom's Jamaican wow. and dad's Jamaican. And since my mom and dad's been here, I've never not seen my mom work. She's worked like three, four jobs all her life that I've been a part of it. Mm -hmm. And she's taught me work ethic and that sometimes you're going to need sacrifice, but she's also taught me those people that are higher up when it comes to Congress and judges and lawyers and doctors, we all have the same problems. They just have more resources. Yep. So at the end of the day, even if you become rich, it's still, what is your character that helps you enjoy the money and enjoy these opportunities and, and yeah, I think money doesn't make often. happiness. Oh, no, 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 no. It just means you have more of who you are. Yeah. And if who you are... It allows are, you to create more of a shell around you. Yeah. And and the shell is a reflection of who you are. Mm -hmm. That's the worst part. Because, like, if you've created the shell, who do you blame on the quality of the shell? Or the lack thereof? Mm. <laughs> There's so many thoughts when it comes to just... I don't know, perception of just people and people just think too much about what pe other people think about them. And I, and I think people should just worry about themselves and not really care if this person, let's say, like, I don't know, you post, like, YouTube videos, like, you're obviously going to get, like, hateful comments. Oh, they're there. Yeah. They're there. But yeah, you, you just, early. But you kind of just take it as it is and just move on. Like, you don't let those people, like... You know what I enjoy? I enjoy when uh, do you mess with them back because oh, I, yeah, no, I, I do. sometimes do I, do. I, poke I, back. I love messing with people yeah because I'm just like this person made time to tell their story that they usually wouldn't be able to tell mm -hmm. so if you're going to come here and you're going to poop all over their story, <laughs> yeah, I'm going like, to throw the poop back at you. I'm like, like, no. Why don't you come in here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, there's one guy, I forgot what the video was about. It was like a month ago, and he said something, and I was like, boo, <laughs> whack, <laughs> try again. Please try again. Because I was just like, that's not even remotely funny. Yeah. But then it's like... It's more just hate. The internet is a big place, and... That means there's a lot of different personalities that go unchecked. Yep. So my job is to never take it personal and to always make it comical. 
but I should also not put pressure on myself to feel I have to do this thing. No, if you have time, cool. If you don't, don't mind your it. business and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. So that's what a lot of what's going on. Like in the last three weeks, I've gained 2,000 followers on YouTube. And that's, that's, that's crazy. Awesome. No, nah, thank you. Thank you. And it's like, I, I have a very high standard for myself. Like, okay, my yeah. goal is to get to a little bit under 100 by the end of the year. Right? But then it's like... How do I get there? A, it's how do I get there? But B, do you understand what you're asking for? You're asking that your voice is going to reach 100,000 people. That means you have the capability to influence the way people think. Yep. That means that there's going to be 100,000 people that also have an opportunity to correct you when you're wrong. Yep. Are you ready for that? Yep. And also, the work that we do when it comes to Get Home Safe, I'm very big on, hey, are we making the impact that we would like to make? And what are your standards for being mm -hmm. accomplished and making that impact? 